Welcome back everyone. This is going to be a bit of a short video. Uh, I was afforded the information of a gentleman that had some TVs he wanted looked at. And apparently right now I'm basically the only person that's willing or dumb enough to take on uh, 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 rebuild work, basically. They got in touch with our local radio and uh, radio club put out feelers for them willing to work on TVs. Most folks, unless it's their own, aren't willing to do it. However, I hate stuff being repurposed or being thrown out because they couldn't get it working or couldn't find someone to get it working. And so I usually say, yeah, sure, you know, I'll take care of it. I probably should have kept my mouth shut this time because I wound up with two televisions to work on. The first of which is this rather nicely preserved Philco Predicta Princess. Um, my holiday is still over there. 99% of the electrical work on that is done. I filmed some of it. I know I gotta finish it, but customers come first. My stuff, I, I can do that anytime I really want. But, uh, the gentleman really wanted to get these working because he wants to sell them off and he realizes it's probably easier to sell them if they're fully functional. Honestly, with the predictas, you can sell these completely non-functional. Some people just like to have them as decor. But again, being working is, is a nice bonus. And considering the condition of the cabinet, this has all of its knobs, uh, all of the, um, the lacquered brass finish and everything is still in good shape. Shadow, the uh, shadow mask and covers is nice and clean. Uh, there is a little bit of nicotine buildup in the grills and the sides, I noticed. And I know it's hard to see, and it's because it's a little out of frame here. But it does still have its original antenna. These are always missing. None of mine have this. So the original brass antenna is there and it does work, which is superb. Yeah, it's supposed to fold down that way. So we have that. Uh, the back plate is intact and it still has the original line cord, or what appears to be the original. Uh, safety cord. All that's still attached. It even has a bay limb hanging off the end of it, which is kind of nice. I can use it to test. Now what I'm told is uh, he did try to fire this one up and he didn't get much vertical deflection. And he was worried that maybe the CRT was weak or something, so I'm going to test the CRT in this and then I'm going to pop the back, take a look inside, make sure there's nothing that looks like uh, imminent danger, and then we'll try gently firing it up. And then once we do that, we got to take a quick look at the other set he dropped off because we we'd, uh, discussed me checking the CRT uh, viability on another set he had. Instead, what I wound up doing was taking both of them home. I wasn't really anticipating doing that, but here we are. So we'll look at that afterwards. So I've got my tester out here and we'll just get this set up and see if this picture tube is any good really and i did look i actually i already popped the back of it off this is the original it, it is an original philco crt the sticker is still on the left side of the bell and it does say 2.68 volt is it 2.68 yeah 2.68 450 milliamps so it's got the original in there so let me pull out my cheat sheet here and i'll get back to you in a second I figure for the sake of uh, being able to see what's going on, I prop this up a little bit. Got our socket adapter in there, got the filament set at about 2.68 volts. We do, sorry, we do have filament glow, so there's that. Uh, okay, uh, check for shorts. Nope. Mission. Oh. Wow, that's. Well, I mean, it's been sitting for a long time, who knows. But that's not great. But if it's been inactive for a very long time, it might just need a little bit of coaxing. I mean, I think my uh, my holiday had the same deal. So I think what we will do is... Out of curiosity, do we have any cutoff control? We do. Okay, so it's not totally dead. We are at 2.68 volts there. Mission just is not super happy, but we can do 
is just gently bring it up to maybe about three volts and then I will leave it for a while and see how we do. And I'll get back to you. Okay, I took the back off the set. The back is actually in pretty good shape, although there were a number of random size self-tapping screws holding it on. I'm probably not going to reuse because they don't look right. Uh, and the original line cord just, whoops, pops right off. No big deal. I can reuse that for testing. Uh, looking in here, there's dust, some cobwebs. I'm not seeing any real evidence of corrosion, so it wasn't in any kind of a... Um, damp environment, unlike my Siesta, which looks like it was probably next to a seaport. And I'm not seeing any evidence of damage. None of the paper caps have exploded or anything. They're all still in... Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. No, there's evidence of work in here. Um, I'm not sure I'd be able to show you what I mean. If we come in to the side here... Sorry, workbench being as not so deep as it is means I can't really get where I want. A lot of stuff in the way. And let me grab my handy dandy thousand dollar flashlight here, courtesy of Apple. Uh, so if we look inside there, we can see some paper caps on the printed circuit board. This guy back here that's an original one. These two, however, are more modern uh, paper caps with the molded plastic exterior. And what I can see, and I don't know if it shows up on the camera very well, is that these guys are not being attached through the hole in the PCB. Rather, they have been looped around the stump of the previous capacitor's lead. Basically, they, they cut off the, uh, the capacitor they left about a quarter inch of, material, of the lead sticking up through the printed circuit board, and then they just loop the new connection around those two stumps. That was an approved method. I've actually seen some service information for uh, radio and TV shops showing that was how you just did, you know, printed circuit board repair. If you couldn't access the back side of the traces to unsolder it, like you would on this guy, considering all the crap you have to do to take it out, that was the way to go. You just chopped them off the top. Same thing with resistors. Now, obviously, I'm not going to do that. They will get replaced properly. Um, so it's had a little bit of work done. Uh, but I'm not seeing anything in here that uh, warrants real concern. It's just it hasn't been worked on in a very long time. and Just needs the usual rigmarole for a more solid operation. I did notice one thing about the cabinet, though. Uh, we're missing a foot, and they are riveted in place. I can see the pop rivet right there. The back left foot is gone. Uh, I checked the ground, and it looks like it just was not there when I got it. So I need to figure out what I can do about that, because otherwise it, it, it rocks slightly. And that's actually where the power transformer sits back there, so a lot of the weight is sitting on that corner fairly unsupported. Don't care for that too much. Uh, but honestly, at this point, I think what I will do is position this set somehow so that I can keep an eye on the inside of the chassis and gently bring it up on the Variac and see if we get anything. Let me see here. Man, this is really not ideal. Okay, I think I can make this work. Hang on a second. You guys are in position to take a look at the CRT. I'm going to shut off the overheads and get my line card installed here. And since this is a transformer set, um, hmm. 
I'm not sure if this has a dedicated rectifier tube or not. I can't see one. No, actually, no. These have um, these have either sl I think they have selenium diodes in the power supply. So don't worry about that. I do, however, see a line to ground or line to line capacitor just behind the plug here. So I'm going to make sure to replace that. So that could be troublesome. Uh, oh wait, hang on. Brightness. We'll go halfway because I don't know. Yeah, all right. And do we have any other controls back here? Width, vertical linearity, uh, horizontal frequency. I think that one's height, but I'm not seeing any controls for vertical linearity. Oh no, wait, no, sorry, I did. I just read that off. Okay, with vertical linearity, horizontal frequency. Huh. All right, so everything we need is right there. Now, let me grab a non. No, well, okay. That screwdriver is a little messed up and isn't going to do what I want it to do, so I'll use this one. Make sure these are loose. Ooh, the horizontal frequency pot was cranked all the way up. We'll center that one. I'll just kind of center all of those. Because all of these appear to have been twiddled. Now, the vertical linearity pot. Ooh, I can't really get that one. Oh, there we go. Alright, about halfway. That ought to do it. Okay, now I just need to assume that the power switch is in the correct position. Alright. Bring it up a little more. So I doubt we're getting enough high voltage to actually get an image. We're only about 80 volts on the line. Oh, hey, look at that. Okay, so brightness is maximum this way, and we can see a bit of a raster. Not much, but kind of. I'm going to gently bring it up to 90 volts. Nothing's burning. Oh, and we're getting audio coming through. Where's the uh, where's the volume control? Okay. Well, we do have to have the max, the uh, brightness kind of cranked up all the way for that to do anything. Uh, why did the audio fade out there for a second? I don't want to run this thing for very long at line voltage. Alright, so it is attempting to fill the screen up. So we're going to go ahead and shut it off. But that's good. So we should be able to produce an image. Um, it's not going to be particularly bright. And it looked like, based on my meter, we were drawing just a hair over 100 watts, I think. Uh, according to that, we should draw about 190. That was, it was probably pretty close to 190. I didn't have it all the way up to 117. Maybe I had it at 110-ish. But, uh, yeah. So we, uh, we've got a raster. That's a good starting point. Uh, next thing to do is going to be to pull the chassis. I need to check and see what uh, run the, the uh, main board is so I can get a new set of 
uh, couplets ordered from the TV Restorer guy. Uh, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to pull the chassis out of uh, the other set as well because I need to get them... I'd like to get the parts ordered for both of them at the same time if I can. Save. Save, save it, uh, shipping, really. Oh, okay, yes. There's on the tag on the inside here. It does actually specify this uses a silicon rectifier diodes. A pair of them for the output. Interestingly, there is a drawn note uh, for the CRT. According to this, the original is a 17DRP4 and someone has penned in 17DAP4. Uh, I'll need to check my tube chart and see what's so different about that. Out of curiosity here. 17DAP4. I was under the assumption this was still a 2.68 volt CRT. Uh, yeah, 17DAP4 is still a 2.68 volt CRT. 2872. Okay, so. Interesting. I wonder why they made that note in there. Either way, that's a good solid start. I'm happy with that. Which means now we need to go out to the other part of the shop and deal with the uh, tag along that came with this. Okay, earlier I mentioned that I wanted to put two sets to work with. This is the other victim. Uh, it's it's a tandem. I've never actually seen a complete one in person, so this is actually pretty cool. Um, originally, I was only supposed to be doing a CRT test on this to see if the 21-inch uh, picture tube was any good. That turned into, well, since it's here, why don't you just take it with you? So, uh, I, I did explain that it's going to take a while to do both of these in between everything else I have going on. So they understand the uh, princess will be the primary focus, and then when that's, once that's done, then I'll move on to this. But I did just want to see what I'm getting into. If the sea is any good, he has a holiday he'd be considering to part out in order to get this one going. Uh, but I, I do want to connect this up to my CRT tester, see if it reads anything, see if we have any cutoff, and then do a gentle power-up. Uh, my only concern is that the power switch on this does not feel good. It uh, does not feel like it's um, doing much of anything. Now, I have seen one on eBay here recently, so if I have to get a replacement, I might be able to, but the latch mechanism doesn't seem to be working, so I'm not sure whether or not I can actually get power to it. I mean, I could, I could jumper it, I suppose, but that would require getting in there, yanking the chassis and everything, and I don't know if I want to do that right now. But let me grab the CRT tester, get that set up, and we'll see how it's doing. Uh, oh, take a quick look around the backside. This one's actually in pretty good shape outside of the usual. It is missing the antenna. Totally gone. Uh, this one does have the optional UHF conversion, or uh, the UHF setup on the inside, like my uh, Holiday does which is pretty neat. Uh, does still have all of its original knobs. I don't know if those are the right ones. And I also, oh, okay, yes, they are labeled. Uh, there's no paint or anything in the lettering, so you can't tell what they say. Not helpful. And very unusually, the cord is in really good shape. There are no brakes. Uh, the connector is also in good shape, I think. There's a line cord on there. That might be the original one. I think the rivets are actually still in there. Um, back's still on it. The, the overall, it's pretty good. What's funny, though, is um, for as much as they wanted this to be something you would set the uh, CRT somewhere else, you can very clearly see that the CRT sat right here almost all of its existence because it protected the finish of the wood underneath the base. Now, everything is kind of discolored, but I'm not working on the aesthetics. Owner just wants it functional. So that's what we're aiming for. All right, let me grab the tester. Okay, I had to do a double check on my uh, B and K tester here because the little chart on the inside back here claimed this was a 21 SFA CRT. 
Um, this schematic is actually because there's an extra tube in the back here to provide amplification for the video circuit because the cable is so damn long that uh, you can get a weak video signal so you can see the uh, this extra amplifier baloney in here. It takes up a good amount of space in there and there's actually some wax caps on the bottom of this which means I'll probably have to take this housing off and I'm not looking forward to that because it was a pain taking apart the other one on my holiday and getting all back together does not seem fun either. It's a plastic shrinkage and other issues. Uh, either way, I did a quick reference. Apparently the 21 SFA it was Philco's internal part number, whereas the industry standard part number is a 21 EAP4, just like my holiday. And it should be 2.34 volts on the heater. However, mine does not ever seem to go up high enough. Uh, in order to get to, well, maybe it will. Um, well, that's about as far as it'll go. We do have filament glow, and that's about 2.4. You can back it off just a hair to be a little more accurate. And yes, we are alive. I doubt I will get much just flipping over to emissions immediately, but we can at least see if there are any shorts. No? Alright, that's good. After the last one, I'm not expecting a whole lot out of this, although the filming glow does seem a little bit brighter than the previous one. Let's see. 300 volts in the G2 there. Huh. Okay, the emissions are just barely in the good zone. Well, that's kind of cool. And uh, it dropped a tiny bit, but it is still just past the bad. That's that's not horrible. I have cut off. We do. I think it's at the very bottom of the range. I think the lowest I'm allowed is like 32. Or is it? No, is it 22? 28 to 72. So, yeah. Kind of. Kind of low there. But, it's alright. Again, this thing hasn't been turned on in a very long time. So, it might just be a matter of. I just let it sit and do its thing. And uh, see if it gets any better. But that that should be plenty enough to produce an image. I mean, the other Philco was, was testing over in here, for crying out loud. Uh, now, I was doing a little bit of research on the uh, possibility of rejuvenating one of these CRTs. Because I have used the, uh, the rejuvenation function on this on a few different ones. Uh, they call it the dynamic intensifier on this model 465. Apparently the method by which this does that, which is basically discharging a capacitor across the cathode, is kind of brute force and not too pleasant for the CRTs, and given the low service life that these sets had, or these CRTs had when they were new, um, it's much higher likelihood of actually permanently damaging it, so I'm probably going to leave them alone. It's not worth ruining an already kind of hard to find uh, picture tube. So that doesn't look bad. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll just uh, plug it in. I'll hook up my watt meter and see how much we're drawing. And see if we can't get it to do something. That'd be kind of cool. All right, my little watt meter hooked up. This is the one we want to pay attention to. 200 watts is over there on the left, the first big pip. I don't know how well you can see that. Uh, flip that on, and we're going to see if we draw anything. I don't know. That power switch is doing anything for us. No. Oh. Okay, the uh, lamp on the tuning knob here is actually illuminated, so... We have that going for us. So we are getting power. Yeah, 
we got nothing. So that's all right. Not super important right now. Just something to keep in mind when I do have to dig into it. And there might be more issues hiding inside. Okay, well, despite the failure on the uh, tandem there, I am plugging away with, I, well, I pulled the chassis out of the, the uh, Princess here. This is a 10L43 chassis. I need to uh, hop on, look at getting a set of replacement couplets for this, and I need to break out my air compressor and get all the dust off this. I went over it with, with a light, uh, like an acid brush, just to knock the loose stuff off. And uh, yeah, it, this should clean up pretty easily. Most of this is just light debris. It's just kind of sitting there. Unlike my holiday, there isn't like a fine layer of gummy junk on there holding everything in place. So this, this should be pretty easy to scrub down. And then I just have, uh, oh, nah, one, two, three multi-section electrolytics. All the axial wax paper capacitors are on the main board here. There's one tucked up into there, that's not too bad. The real sad part is this, uh, this resistor right here. Yeah, that is... There were bits of it underneath the chassis. This happened a long time ago. This thing got hot. And amazingly, it was still working enough for us to even run the set. I think I actually have a spare one of those that came with my holiday. Uh, yeah, actually I do. I don't know if it's the right value. I'll have to look it up and probably just get a modern power resistor replacement to put in there. That's probably going to do it for now. Um, I'm not quite done with the other television that I was working on, the 17-inch uh, Sylvania. There's some glitches popping up in the vertical circuit that I want to take care of before I give the set back. It's driving me nuts right now, and I'm also getting an occasional high-pitched scream just randomly. And I don't know what the deal with that is, so I'm, I am I got to debug it. Probably going to have to pull the cabinet back off, or the uh, chassis back out of the cabinet, flip it on its side, go through the vertical circuit again. Maybe there's some resistors around a tolerance, or uh, check a few of the tubes and see if they have shorts or anything. I'm not sure. All right, this is a quick addendum. Um, I wasn't super satisfied with the, the way the Philco tandem bit work, uh, went. I didn't really pull the chassis out or look at it, make sure the tubes were lighting up or anything. So I did run it a second time. I pulled the chassis out, took the back off the uh, CRT housing, brought it up on the Variac just to verify that all of the tubes were actually lighting up, and they were. Um, interestingly, this chassis does not appear to have had any kind of repair work done. I didn't find... Oh, no, I'll take that back. Yeah, it has. These capacitors here, there's curly cues installed uh, for some of the older components. It has had some work on the top, then I think there's a little bit of work done. No new electrolytics. What's interesting, though, is the uh, rectifier diodes on the Holiday and the... Um, God, the vertical set. I forget what it's called. The... Uh, uh, the barber pole, those you all use the same chassis, and the uh, rectifier is tucked back here, and it sticks up out of the top. Uh, the tandem, because the plug is right here, it looks like they put the rectifiers in the middle. These two little guys here, and they're in these little fuse holder sockets, using the body of it. I think for the positive end, need to check. I put a multimeter on these, just out of curiosity, to see what kind of voltage drop I was getting across them, or even referencing the chassis, and I wasn't getting anything, so I don't think we're getting B+. Plus. It was not a very scientific measurement, it was just sort of a quickie dick thing, and I didn't have the schematic pulled up to verify that was the, the proper test point. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think this set's getting high voltage. All the filaments are glowing, so... That's just something i got to keep in mind for when I dig into this one. Uh, well, let's take a look at the bottom real quick. I'll try to be gentle, I don't mash any of the tubes here. There's not a whole lot for this to rest on when it's flipped over. So, yeah, if you've, uh, what do I say now? If you see me work on the holiday, then this is the same deal. But yeah, so all, all the electrolytics are still in place, all the wax caps are still in place. Um, 
I'm not, I think these power resistors in here, these look pretty new. I highly doubt they would have used Omite. Uh, I think these are vitreous enamel resistors, something like that. The hockey puck in here is still intact, so I wanted replacing that. Um, no new wiring, which is kind of nice, uh, and it's all fairly clean. It is a little sticky on top, not as bad as mine was, but a little bit. But, uh, yeah, nothing really unusual going on here. It's got the UHF option. Not that that means much. The only thing that is damaged on this... Oh, and I found out that the volume control switch does work. Uh, the problem was all the screws had been taken out of the chassis hold down locations. So every time I pushed on the power switch, it would just push the thing back further into the cabinet. Um, once it's properly secured, it works just fine. So someone had been in there, and there were there's a lot of random self-tapping screws on these holding things in place. I'm going to have to dig up some proper quarter-inch head uh, ones. This is the other main problem. The high-tension connection for the CRT has cracked off the center. However, I should be able to gently uh, re-glue that. You guys can see that? Yeah. Glue that back in and get it locked in place with some Gorilla Glue or similar. Um, yeah, I, I have to figure. The cord was probably hooked up to it and maybe they accidentally smacked it or they, they pulled it off sideways. Who knows? Uh, but yeah. I also did see, if I can get the top of the <clears throat> sardine can here off. Top. This is a little bit out of shape. There we go. Uh, the flyback's a little crackly looking. The uh, coating on it is starting to chip off. It's not smoky or anything. It does appear to have a fairly recent 1B3 in here. A realistic brand, which is kind of interesting. Um, I really hope that this is okay. Uh, yeah. I think that will do it. Like I said, I'm just going to set this one aside. I got to get into the princess and start to undoing the main board from that. And, and I already dusted it off. And it's it's pretty clean, pretty intact. Got to order some new tube sockets. I got to tally up all the electrolytics I'm going to need for that. I might have some electrolytics left over from the holiday to use on this. But I might have used some of them to work on that Sylvania set. And I still got to fix the last little quirk that that has before I can really dedicate a lot of time to these. But uh, once, again, well, once again, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Hopefully not too long.